If you want to catch big walleyes, fish big water. Because when it comes to walleyes, big fish and big water go hand in hand. With abundant bait fish and room to roam, walleyes often grow to gargantuan proportions in these waters. Yet given their ability to get up and go, they may elude your efforts if you're not rigged and ready to pursue them. Except, however, during late spring, when fish location is fairly stable and predictable. As post-spawn walleyes drop out of shallow spawning locations, they take up feeding positions on the adjacent flats. Weed beds and rock piles adjoining feeder rivers and rocky shorelines become high percentage locations to find post-spawn walleyes filtering across the flats. And with the numbers of huge fish lying closer to shore than at any other time of the year, it's prime time to go big or go home. That's an elephant. You know, forecasting fish is a big part of angling. You want to get on the front end of these fish, find out where they're moving to, and you can strike gold, baby. Oh, Dan. Nice. Yeah. Good fish. Oh, yeah. You can see that rod good load fish. up. Good fish. Good fish. It feels so good. Yep. I love doing this, man. Absolutely love it. Spring is in the air. <laughs> I love it. I may need your assistance, yep. young man. I okay. may just need your assistance. It's good when you got to do a little back railing. Look at her. Oh, come on. Oh boy, big, oh, you big old slug. Come slug. on, baby. Get her up. There you go. Let me show you this baby, huh? Nice. Oh, that's a good one. Dan and I are enjoying a very, very early season walleye bite. And by early, let me check her out. I'm almost sure. Yeah, look at that. Spawned out female. And one of the earlier ones that was up and she dumped already. Water temperature when I'm talking early is 41 to about 45, 46. Some fish have spawned out like her and a whole bunch of fish are still in the spawn. And uh, this is an interesting time. This year is one of the latest seasons I've ever seen up in the North Country. The ice just went off of this lake just a little while ago. And uh, when you get in, in on these walleyes during the spawn, actually during the spawn and fishing post-spawn, there's certain areas that you could catch fish on. A lot of areas got fish and they're really difficult to catch. There's areas that the odds go up a lot. We're gonna talk a little bit about that. What's happening back here? Yeah, good one? Yep. They're all good ones. Yeah, I know. Oh, he's running me around the boat. Hang on, hang on. All right. Oh, he's running me around here a little bit, Al. Oh. Ooh, nice one, as usual. I'm the official net man on this one. Here I he like comes, that. Al. How come I left that fish Look behind? At him. <laughs> I left that fish behind, Dan. Look at him, he just that. devoured that hot skirt. Yeah, yeah. Come here, baby. Oh, it's so pretty. <laughs> yeah, and that clear water really looks great. Spring walleye bite. Look at that. Nice fish. We'll get her on hook. Boy, she just devoured that thing. Eee. Boop. There we go. We'll get her back in the water. That was a nice fish. As you can see, we're on a big lake. And big lakes, pound for pound, offer anglers uh, bigger populations of big fish. It's big, big, big. You know, smaller lakes just don't have the carrying capacity for large numbers of large fish. So, you know, in spring like this, find some big water. I'll add one more thing to that, Dan. A lot of people don't have big boats like my big Lund, Lund that we use, my 2075 and the 250. Verado that you can run around on these big big lakes and uh, this time of the year everything is close to shore. You see the highway it's all all along the shoreline. All the fish are up fairly shallow so you can get to these fish early in the season even in a small boat. When they get done here and start migrating out into the ocean 
you, you know, you got to really pick your days. But this is a great time for everybody, no matter what size boat you have. Even kayaks or canoes, if you would choose to. A lot of good shore spots happen now, too. So it's a great time for anybody to have access to an awful lot of big walleyes. You know, on these big lakes in spring, a few degrees of water temperature raising up can uh, make a big difference where these fish are at and how active they are. You know, the wind has a lot to do with that. We're kind of tucked in a bay here. I started fishing up there and the water temperature was about 42 degrees. Here it's 44.2. The wind is kind of pushing down into this corner. You're starting to see more bait and everything. That couple degree temperature change has taken all of the bait that was in here. It's pushing it up on this side of the lake. And guess what's following? The walleyes. In this case, these fish on, uh, on most of the big walleye lakes and better walleye lakes where we fish in the North Country, the four are just two things. It's spot tail shiners and it's perch. And they're both in here right now. This time of the year, this location is often overlooked. Let me just explain it a little clearer here. Like we said in the past, not all the fish in the lake are doing the same thing at the same time. The big spawned out females we're targeting today are the first initial run of spawners. They just got done doing their deal and they're putting a feed bag on. We're simply intercepting this initial wave of post-spawn female walleyes. Now when I said this location is often overlooked by fishermen, that is because a lot of walleye guys are programmed to fish structure and rocks. Well, what we're fishing today is structure less. These big, shallow, what will be weed bays warm up fast. If there's a creek coming in the back, all the better. These are also the rearing areas for a lot of bait fish. This is where the perch are staging to spawn once the water hits an optimal temperature and the weed growth is up enough for them to lay their eggs on. These big female walleyes know this and are simply following their appetite. And what we're serving up is a subtle helping of jigs. I know I was, I could feel that the little sticky bottom back there it was a little gravel, a little rock. I'm like, boy, that feels nice, man. You can feel it with that rod. And you got a bite. And I got a bite. I know I was, I could feel that the little sticky bottom back there it was a little gravel, a little rock. I'm like, boy, that feels nice, man. You can feel it with that rod. And you got a bite. And I got a bite. You know what I might do? I might have to talon again. I know there. I know there's some living here. <laughs> the other donkey. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They're yeah. all big, boy. Then yeah. I'm gonna hit the talon, and then I'll be right with you. All right. Bob, you're talking me into putting my hot skirts back on. Yeah. You've been smoking me on the hot skirts. Smoking me. Yeah. That's one thing about these these bigger bodies of water like this. Yeah, you know, they have so many big fish in them. Get them, get them, cheap. All right. All right. That's another good one, boy. Nice fat fish. You got it. You've been, you've been smoking me on that, that hot skirts. I'm throwing a moon eye. He's coming behind me with that hot skirts. Going boom, boom, boom. I think I might have to change. You're getting them, that's for sure. Look at that. There's so much fun in the spring like this. I really think I got the shuffle down, Al. Al, why don't we uh, show the people why these fish are in this particular spot right here? Now, so see this area here? This is gravel. See this area, gravel, a little bit bigger rock. You see this on the side imaging. Now these, will, these areas will be overgrown with weeds in summer. Weed beds will come over this. But that gravelly stuff, like you're seeing in here, that's what, what you're making that contact on right now, this broken gravelly little stuff like that. That's what those fish are using right now. Just gravel, you see a few bigger rocks out here that looks like a barrel or something off to the side. But this is what he's dragging that jig through. And you got bait in there and you got your water temperature. Yeah. And then weeds will be over that soon. It's not big rock, it's gravelly fish side and it'll be covered with leaves later. That's what those fish are in. Let's take a peek into Al's jig box. Ta-da! You thought it would be something special, didn't you? Well, 
When you're fishing in the spring like this, there's one bait that'll get it done, and that's the jig. Today, we're using the VMC Hot Skirt Jig. That's always a go-to. And the VMC Moon Eye Jig. And the size of the jig you want to be using or focusing on is a 16th ounce, an eighth ounce, and a quarter ounce, and you'll be covered. You know, this time of the year, on these big lakes, you get in areas like we're in now, a lot of times you're not fishing, you know, two, three, or four fish. There's hundreds of fish, and in some cases, I know in some cases there's thousands in the schools. They move that big, and uh, uh, that's how many fish can be in these big water lakes. And the best walleye lakes in North America consistently are really, really big lakes. You know, the bigger the lake, the, the better for big schools of big walleyes. That holds true anywhere, anywhere. But just imagine, as you can look in an area, just imagine with your mind, 250 fish right around you. Or maybe a thousand in some of these lakes where you can see, uh, you know, as far as you can see, there's boats down a section of bank and all you see is nets going into the water. And that's what you can expect on some of these big lakes in spring of the year. You know, other big bodies of water that have rivers, sometimes they'll migrate up into the river systems, like off of the Great Lakes or some of the other big lakes, like Lake of the Woods and the Rainy River, that's a traditional thing. Lots of guys get in there in bumper boats. When you get out on these big lakes like this, there's so, so many big schools of fish. The potential is amazing. Oops, they have a phenomenal go. day underwater. Oh, oh yeah. There, it's starting to thunk. You can feel those shoulders on them, Al. This is another better one, man. This is a good one. Now, we may want to tail him down here. Oh, another log. Oh, okay. I like it. I like it. I, I'm, I'm liking, liking it. it. I'm liking it, you know. <laughs> We're going to test your, your net skills. You've been... They've been liking that hot skirts pretty oh, good, yeah. haven't they? The great walleye bait. Probably one of the best walleye jigs. Look at that. Boy, they're I all big, beautiful all fish, man. Let's take a peek at this dude. Oh, man. Look at that, Al. Another beautiful walleye, man. Look at that, Al. Another beautiful walleye, man. Let's get him unhooked. Get him back in the water. Back in the water. Boy, those fish are so much fun in the spring like this. I want to talk about the rod, reel, and line setup that we got today. This is a 6'9 quantum smoke rod, medium action. A 25 energy reel, and we got six pound suffix 832 braid, which is perfect for this walleye fishing. The one thing that uh, you want to make a note of, whenever you're fishing with braid like this, you wanna back that drag off. Whatever, whatever you normally have your drag set at, just back it off a couple ticks. That talon's become an amazing tool that I depend on more than I ever realized. The new talon, it's a 12 footer. I can pin down in 12 feet in instantly, just punch the button and you're down. And when you've got these walleyes moving on these massive flats like this, in these real crystal clear lakes, they can get pretty touchy. And you're moving around with the trolling motor and you're moving these fish around and some of these structures, sometimes you got, you know, you might have 20, 25 other boats. We're lucky right now we don't, but there's other areas you're moving the fish constantly with the boats. And these fish get spooked around. As soon as we get a fish, we tail them down, you work the area, and you'd be surprised. Sometimes you can sit there for two hours if you're in an active area with a lot of fish going, never lift the tail. You just sit there and you catch a fish here and you catch a fish there. And it's like the boat almost becomes a magnet. They come to you where if you're moving with them in colder and moving around, you're starting to push the fish a little bit. And that's because that water is so clear and they're so spooky. It's an amazing tool, it really is. And a lot of people are becoming aware of how incredibly productive that thing can be for a lot of different kinds of fishing. You know, Al and I will fish with jigs like this for walleyes all year long, spring, summer, and fall. 
and your presentation follows the water temperature. You know, it's it's pretty cool right now. So our shuffle is pretty slow. You know, it's lift, follow that bait down, lift, follow that bait down. As that water temperature picks up in midsummer, we may go into these weed beds and we are just pop jigging, ripping jigs through those weeds. On the back end of the year, when that water temperature cools down in the fall, same thing happens. Our presentation slows back down. The other night when I was in here two days ago with my buddy, this whole bank here was filled with gulls and they were eating spot tail shiners. I mean, it was just lit up. It was like a Alfred Hitchcock story. <laughs> I, I mean, it was something to see. I never seen that many in one area. You can see one guy sitting at the mouth of this little creek that runs in here. He's been here for some time. There he is. Unbelievable, unbelievable. It's that <laughs> shuffle, man. I know it, I it's know it. It's just a light little sweep. Uh, I mean, it's it just amazing how you got that one figured out because they know we're going through fish. I can't get bit. Another beast. Yeah. Oh, yeah. well. Damn, damn, that's a big one, That's Dan. a nice one, that's a nice yeah. one. Get her, get her, get her, get her, get yeah, her, get her. Yep. Okay. Come here, come here, come here. All right. Okay, here one. we go, Boy, Al. Nice fat fish. Mister, you can be my net man. Oh, that's a good one. Net man. Oh. Look at this. <laughs> oh, man. This is so much fun. Look at that tanker. I think I got that. Boy, I, it's such a subtle, subtle thing right now with that presentation. And it varies every day. It's a little different, little different thing, man. You just got to keep your eyes open on the fine points of what you're doing, you know, and then replicate it. And you can get fish after fish after fish. There we go, beauty. I got it, finally. Yeah, I finally, I put the skirts on and I've been watching him, watching him do his shuffle and I finally <laughs> got bit. Been a while, he's been going boom, 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 boom. It's my turn for a little boom, boom here. All right. Definitely seems to be making a difference. You know, I threw that moon eye for quite a while, which is one of my absolute favorite baits. Yeah, 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 you know. And, um, yeah, he was, I started with that moon eye. Boy, this is a, a skinnier fish. It might be a male, let me see here. No, no, no. Then I finally, finally put on that, the hot skirts and, and scored. You know, little things like that, and I guess it ain't a little thing, but you pay attention. We always start with both jigs. Yeah, you, you know, most of the time I'll have two rods. I'll have one with the moon eye and a soft bait on the back, and I'll have the hot skirts like this. With, uh, usually if I got a boot tail on this one, I'll have a split tail on the other bait, at least to start with. That'll be the game we're playing. You know, and then you start, you start seeing uh, uh, things to the action of the jig. More dragon like he's doing here. Once in a while you'll see a color change. Yeah, you know, the size, size, you keep tweaking, tweaking, tweaking. When two guys in a boat, you could do that. Al is kind of a purist when it comes to using soft baits for walleyes. He very, very rarely uses live bait. Me, on the other hand, I have no purist values. If they want meat, I carry meat and I deliver it to them. That brings up a very important little live bait tip. There is one type of minnow that will outproduce all others at this time of the year. If you can get your hands on some spot tail shiners, do it, because this variety of minnow will outproduce any other bait in the bait store. It can be like magic. If you want to be a purist like Al and I today, using strictly soft baits, you just have to be very conscious of your retrieve because it makes all the difference in the world when you don't have the added attraction of live bait. There he is. Got him. Yep. Got him. The boys had a really your presentation is so subtle, you know what I mean? There's, you're not pop jigging it really hard at this time of year. The water is pretty cool, man. So you want to be just letting that bait drop down. Look at that, that's a good one, Al. Oh, 
Boy, this baby has got some weight, man. There he is. Oh, look at that big lug. Boy, this is a tanker, Al. I suppose I gotta come to work again? Yep. Yep. I love looking at him in this cool I know, water. it's so cool, right? Yeah. Look at that, boy. Look, that's, that's a big fish. Big fish, man. <laughs> you gotta big love man. that, man. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, look at the size of this fish, man. That Real is boy, an nice elephant. Fish. That's an elephant. You know, forecasting fish is a big part of angling. You wanna get on the front end of these fish, find out where they're moving to, and you can strike gold, baby. Look at that big moose, man. <laughs> That's fun. I just finished reading another magazine article about a guy that complained to this particular school about a coach that actually prayed with a lot of his athletes. And uh, uh, he said, I'm offended by somebody praying like this. And you hear these stories all, all the time. One person is offended by this and they complain about it. Uh, you, they don't like to see this cross. I'm offended by that cross being there. I'm offended by the Ten Commandments in front, in front of me. And one person complains and a whole bunch of people roll over and attorneys get involved in everything. I gotta share something with you. I'm offended that they're offended by something that I believe in and is a part of my everyday life. I think that should make us even, doesn't it? Hey, from all of us here at the edge, you have a good safe fishing season. We'll see you in the water. Hey, I want to take a moment to thank you for watching. And if you really like what you see, we got a whole lot more. So check us out at any one of these online outlets.